entrepreneur, small business owner from Newport Sun. Newport Sun is my company. I'm a 2020 EMGT graduate um, from U of B. I just walked like over last weekend. Um, so a question for you guys, who has thought about being an entrepreneur? Yes, I love it. Yes, yes, okay. So Euphoric Sun is an agent-inspired beauty and accessories brand. We started um, last year in September. A lot of people ask why I started. The big part is I couldn't find a job. That's a big one. It was hard because it's COVID, couldn't find a job. Um, but another one is because I've always wanted to create my own projects. I've been in co-op and I've been an engineer manager and in that field during co-op, I felt like I couldn't control the projects that I was working on. I was given projects, I had to own them, I had to do them, I had to talk to other people, you know, everything to do with that project besides creating the project. So I was given the project and had to work on it, basically. Um, and entrepreneurship has always been on my mind. I minored in entrepreneurship. I've always thought about it. I just didn't know how I would get into it. So I just did my research and yeah. And also recently we got incorporated, which means we're Euphoric Sun Incorporated now. Yes, okay. Pros and cons of being an entrepreneur. Um, these are just pros and cons that I see, but also like overall in entrepreneurship. These are also the same pros and cons. Pros is you do projects that you see fit. So you create the projects, you do what you want. You're every, everything on the team because you are your own team. So creation, all the way from creation to producing it, to selling what you're trying to sell, that's all on you. <laughs> So ability to control, there's a lot of control in that aspect. I can create anything I see fit, or I ask my customers, you know, what they like to see, and then I create that. But there's nowhere in there where someone gives me a project and I have to create, you know, what they give me, and that's all like with their specifications. So I make my own specifications, um, all of that. Another pro is you get to set your own schedule. That's how I'm able to be here today, although I work like, 24 seven basically, um, but I am able to set my own schedule, take time off when I need to, take a break when I want to. There's no 15, 30 minute break. You just have to give it to yourself. Um, you can decide to work, decide not to work. That's on you too. Money goes to you. So as an entrepreneur, the money and the profit, it just comes to me. And if I hire people, I allocate it to them. So I don't have like a base salary. I'm not paid like 20 an hour. Like there's nothing set. It's all, if I put effort into it, then I get more out of it. Um, I get to choose who I work with. So I get to pick my team, that kind of thing, which is really nice. It's not a set team when you're put into a team. You get to create your own team if you're an entrepreneur. Um, and these are not steps either. I'm not gonna tell you steps on how to be an entrepreneur because no entrepreneur can tell you the steps of being an entrepreneur. It's not a straight path. You just decide you want to do something and you go to do it, basically. And no worry of working to the top, meaning you are the top. You are the boss, you are your own boss, and that's a good thing because you don't have to worry about, oh, what do I do to impress my boss to get the salary raise? So there's none of that. Unless you're trying to, you know, if you're, Working in a more sales setting um, type of entrepreneurship, you're trying to impress your customers, you're trying to get their attention, uh, things like that, but you still are the top. Not saying that you make all the decisions because decisions aren't based on just yourself. Decisions are based on what the consumer wants and um, whoever you're selling to or whatever product service you're doing, um, it depends on the consumer and what they want. And the big part is doing what you love. If you're really passionate about it, you get to do what you love. And this could be anything. It doesn't have to be like, for me, I have an Asian-inspired beauty and accessories business, and I'm doing what I love. I've always wanted to do that. Um, I've always wanted to go into like cosmetology, even though I've never went to school for it. And yeah, so I love it. I'm doing what I love. And you can, it could be in any field. It could be in real estate. Dropshipping, marketing, um, you can
can start a business with your buddies and create something, make a product. I mean, you guys are product and project engineers, so. So cons, there are cons. I feel like the media doesn't tell you enough about the cons. A lot of people glorify entrepreneurs and say like how it's simple to get into. It could be simple to get into, but not easy to get it rolling. Um, yeah, so people always say that, like the media doesn't tell you about like the cons. Um, they tell you how easy it is, you know, like you should be a, like affiliate marketer or a drop shipper or get into real estate. And they say it like it's easy, but none of it is easy. There are definitely cons. One is sometimes you get stuck. So they call it creative block and I get that too. So if I'm working packaging orders too often, then sometimes I have a creative block. And I usually, how I fix that is I ask my customers what they want. I kind of get ideas and inspiration from other people, other things. Sometimes I have to pull memories from like my childhood or something like that to create a product. You have to get like all the knowledge from what you learned like a long time ago to, to understand. The more risks are also involved than working a nine to five. Yeah, in a nine to five, you can be fired, you know, that kind of stuff, but it's more stable. That's why they say nine to five jobs are more stable. If I lose my business, that's all I have unless I had another stream of income. But my business is like basically like a child. It's my baby. So there are more risks involved because if you have, if you're giving something to consumers too, uh, you're selling something, there's risk of them not liking it, them being like putting judgment on it, telling you you're bad. You know, there's so much like that. So there's a lot of risk involved than, um, the working nine to five. And it feels more personal because this is something that you work really hard to start up. And um, if somebody says something bad about it, it's different than they're saying bad about your company or um, your like your company you work for um, because it's something that you like started and it took more effort to do it, it feels like, because it's like your own. You're working more than eight hours a day. If they say, if they tell you, that entrepreneurs don't have to work that hard. They're lying because they have to work really hard. Um, just because I get more time to myself and like more time to rest when I can doesn't mean that um, we work less. There's, I'm working like 24 seven. Sometimes I'm out with my friends and I'm on my phone working. Even homecoming, I went to homecoming and I was still on my phone during rest time, like posting and um, working and stuff and I have to plan the day before if I wanted to take a day off so I work Monday to Sunday like every day um, and if I wanted to take a day off I had to plan beforehand so that the day that I am off I can I have more things to post and more things to um, show my customers and be active because if I'm not active no one else posting for me um, then I won't get any like um, get anything from it. If you stop the business, the money stops. So that's a con too. Um, and I kind of went over it earlier. You're responsible for it all. It's a big responsibility. I know I'm making it sound really scary, but it's actually really fun to do because it's really like, how do I even explain it? It feels really good because I'm doing something that I love to do. and. Yeah, like if I couldn't, I couldn't find a job, I was like, let me just create this job. Um, and it just feels really nice. So, but yeah, if you do stop, everything else stops. So you have to have um, backup plans. What are you going to do if you don't get inventory? What are you going to do if someone doesn't like your product? Are you going to discontinue it? Are you going to uh, reach out to FedEx and like complain that you didn't get your inventory and get your money back? Are you going to create more? The biggest one for me, um, because I didn't know about this. I don't know why I didn't know, but entrepreneurship is lonely. At least for the beginning, it's lonely. I'm working at home all the time. I don't, I'm not used to it because I'm always at school before. I always see like faces of people. Like it feels nice to be around people just for me because I'm like an extroverted person and I love just being around people and getting other people's energy. So it does get lonely and there's no one to, go to when you have a mistake or you're you did something wrong you're trying to get advice from 
you're trying to ask about something. It's always just the internet, you're researching. Um, so it does get a little lonely, but it also means that in the future you can build your own team. So you just have to keep working hard and that's, that's all we're trying to do. So to explain what this means too. Yeah, so once you decide to take that risk, every decision from there has to be tested in order to minimize input and maximize output. So what input is, is the effort it takes, the cost, um, the money, like all of that, the effort, time, cost, is the input. So what you're inputting into the business. And output is what you're getting from it, your goals, your sales, uh, accomplishments. And so we're doing more and more. So that's what you do as a business. You keep learning, you keep growing. Um, because if you stop doing that, then everything will stay the same. Things might even drop. You, there'd be there'd be more input and less output. To minimize what we do, like me myself, I hire people to do certain tasks. I have three ambassadors that work for me. Um, they handle like Pinterest, blog posts, creative designing things, um, and I also have two helpers helping me sometimes. Um, on their weekends or whenever they can to pass orders, um, which is really good because it gives me more time to do like research on marketing, uh, research how, um, how we're gonna grow the business, try to find people to like get in on it also. So we're trying to do that. Then we'll get more output in the future. Contingencies and testing for everything too. So there's going to be, you have to make contingencies and you have to, uh, test everything um, and that's how we also uh, minimize our input and maximize our output because if you don't test your things you might sell it to customers and then you get bad feedback and that's a lot of money that's just wasted because you didn't test a product so all products must be tested all contingencies must be made so what happens if a customer doesn't like something and um, they end up like charging you for the product even though they receive the product. Stuff like that. Or what happens when I lose inventory? I have to make more. So contingencies like that have to be made. Um, some things are harder to control like lost packages. Um, you don't want to spend more on inventory if you're assuming that the inventory is supposed to be here but it's not here. But you have to jump on it fast. Like once you fall down you have to get back up really fast and you know be able to make a plan on what you're going to do next um, if something fails. Attributes and skills of being an entrepreneur. So this is just overall, it doesn't have to be small business, it could be in like affiliate marketing, you're trying to do real estate, you're trying to uh, sell this game you design, anything like that. The first one is passion. You have to be passionate because without being passionate about your own business is going to fail. I've seen some friends try to start businesses and halfway through they stop. They're like, I'm just gonna go find a job. I still have to do school. Sometimes it takes that. Like it takes you having passion and saying, oh, my parents don't like me starting a business, so I have to move out. You know, um, some, some person, my friend doesn't like me me starting a business so you have to drop that friend. You know, that's what passion is because you really want to do this and the more heart you put into it, the more you get out of it because without the passion, you just take off all these other ones. Like you won't you won't put your 100% into it. And that's what I felt when I uh, worked at COA. Um, I felt like I didn't have passion. And so it wasn't fair for me, and it was also not fair for the employer that the projects they gave me, I wasn't putting my 100% into it. Yeah, I do it fast, yeah, I'll get it done, but it's not done in a way where I'm proud of myself. And I feel like for a business, you have to have that or else nothing matters. So the other thing that you must have, research. Research is a big one. I learned a lot of, and this ties in with knowledge also, and I learned a lot of knowledge from classes, engineering management, of course, um, like things that I learned in school that's just in the back of my mind, I had to like pull out, you know, like business, like uh, business skills and things like that. So I'm 
sure for all of you engineering management majors, you have to take business classes too. So, or you have to take the innovations class and you learn a little bit of that and you put it into uh, your business you want to start. And the rest would just be research. So like Google, Google's your best friend. You just Google it. Um, if you have a question like, how do I do shipping? How do I, um, I don't know, how do I do all these logistics? You just Google how to do it and they'll give you an answer. So risk taking, starting a business overall is a risk. So yeah, you have to take risks. You have to try things out and test things out. Last month I, I spent like 30,000, 20,000 on inventory just to test it out to see if um, it will make me more profit or not. It kind of evens out, uh, but you have to take those risks in order to know whether it's good or not. Like I had the money, so I might as well just take that risk. Those are just small risks in my opinion. A bigger risk is if I'm trying to move out, if I'm trying to, uh, like when I was trying to get my company to be incorporated. It's a bigger risk because there's more involved in it. There's laws, there's legal, other legal work. There's so much uh, more involved to it. Calculations, you have to calculate um, everything, make a plan for everything. This is just to, it's kind of like making contingencies. You're making a plan so that, you know, you know you won't, um, this will go through and this will happen step by step so that um, you're less likely to fail. Innovation, so you have to be creative. In any, like being in any type of entrepreneurship, you have to do the research, you have to be innovative. Trying to do something, uh, like for me, we're trying to do, we're always trying to figure out and trying to do something that's not out in the market. Yeah, you can do the same thing as other people, but you know, it's like feels nice to like innovate and if your product goes through, you can tell other people that, hey, I was the first to do this. Management, I'm sure you guys all have those skills because you're in engineering management, but being able to manage projects. Inspiration, sometimes I pull inspiration since I'm an Asian inspired like brand, I pull inspiration from my childhood. It's like things that I don't know. Sometimes I still do the research, but like I'll take inspiration from going outside and seeing nature or like asking a friend, asking my customers. I'm always trying to be inspired so that I can create new products, create better products, ask other people's opinions about my products to make it better. So this and realization of the e-commerce space. This is the e-commerce space in particular. You'll have less, less of like these certain risks if you're doing something like real estate, um, but people will judge you and people would admire you. That's just how it is. If I'm on, a lot of you guys are probably on social media, so you know, like, it's kind of crazy on there, and people are really judgmental. People will say something's wrong, and then it's, it's like little tiny things. So, yeah, people will judge you, people will admire you. Make sure you know how to set up a website and know how shipping works. Shipping is more complicated than you think, and um, if you're, you have to, First, you have to think about, am I going to ship from home or am I going to drop ship an item? So that's like in an e-commerce space. Like for me, we ship from home and we have to figure out how shipping works. And shipping is like more expensive during the holidays. Like right now it's more expensive. Um, an example I'll give you is that some of my customers ordered before, I think October 3rd, but I didn't process the orders until after October 3rd. So I ended up paying more shipping than what they paid for because of the change in shipping prices for the holidays. I don't want to wait until after the holidays to ship it to them. That would be kind of messed up. Figure out all the logistics as fast as you can before you make mistakes. So how you're going to ship out things, how, how are you going to ship out products, how are you going to receive products, how much space you have in the office space or your house to store things um, if you are shipping from home. Uh, legal work, legal work is tough. What I recommend for legal work is try not to do it all yourself. Like, you know, we're not accountants, we're not lawyers, we can't do all that ourselves, we can't do all of that by just Googling it because these people have like, you know, really good experience, they went to school for it. So hire a CPA, hire a business lawyer if you need to. Um, yeah, so legal work is complicated. I try not to touch it. I know about it and I know what things I have to do. 
uh, but I try not to like mess with it too much because it's very complicated and it's very fragile. So you don't want to mess with the government or like pay your taxes wrong. And bookkeeping, like, are you going to do the bookkeeping? Bookkeeping is um, like your calculations, your profits, all of that. Um, are you going to do the bookkeeping? Or are you going to have someone else do the bookkeeping? How are you going to pack orders, etc.? If you don't use social media to build influence, you're missing a big part of marketing. Marketing is very important. Now I'm going to say, um, who knows who knows who Gary V is? Do you guys any of you guys know who Gary V is? Yeah, okay. Um, so he says that what we're trying to get from an audience. Um, or anyone is we're trying to keep their attention. Attention is what we're selling. You know, that's what we're trying to get is if somebody like looks at something online and you have their attention for a business, they might buy it. If you keep their attention long enough, they might buy it. So you have to use social media to build influence or else you're missing a big part of marketing. I feel like a lot of like big businesses or like medium, I'm gonna say medium sized businesses, they start failing because they miss out on this because they feel like they can't start social media or oh they don't want to put their face on screen or something like that. But it is important um, because all of us are on it. And especially with the pandemic, we're like on it even more. You get like a bigger audience to see what you're doing, to buy what you're selling. And then the last one is, um, I heard this on Shark Tank once, a good product does not equal good sales and a bad product does not equal bad sales. And what do I mean by that? So what it means is that if you have a really good product but bad marketing and bad selling, it's not a good product. If people don't even know your product exists, it's not a good product because you can't make sales on it. So it doesn't matter how innovative you are. If you don't know how to sell your product or get it in front of an audience, it doesn't matter. But if you have a bad product or an okay product and you know how to sell it really well, you know how to use the tools you have, the tools online to be able to sell it, then it becomes, people think it's a good product because of the way you're selling it. I know a few companies that are like that. I don't think their products are the best. I'm not gonna name names, but I don't think their products are the best, but their packaging and their marketing and their online influence and everything like that is really really good and that that's what makes their product really good and the way their selling point who they're selling to their target audience um all of that is really good so that's what makes them a really good product that's all of your rulings <laughs> <That's awesome. laughs>